Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and today we are looking at the Pokemon Lavender Town Syndrome. Pokemon is a much loved children's video game series from the 1990s that also managed to appeal to adults and has spawned books, TV shows, comics, toys, clothing, and most recently, a viral mobile app called Pokemon Go. It may seem strange for a horror channel to be covering such a video game series, right? You obviously haven't heard of the creepy backstory to one of the early Pokemon games and the location within it. Lavender Town. Lavender Town was a location found within the Game Boy game Pokemon Red that originally launched in Japan in 1996. Lavender Town was designed to be the game's spookiest location and resembles an isolated rural community and home to a large graveyard. The creepy part of this is that the graveyard is home to hundreds of dead Pokemon. It's literally a Pokemon graveyard, with the ghosts of a Pokemon haunting the surrounding area. Lavender Town was also home to a piece of music that is supremely creepy and completely out of place in such a family-friendly video game. Lavender Town's music composed by Junichi Masuda has been rumoured to be the cause of over 100 Japanese child suicides during the game's launch in spring of 1996. However, this is simply a myth and I'll explain the story behind what is now known as Lavender Town Syndrome, but before that, let's take a listen to the music from Lavender Town to give you an idea of just how creepy this tune actually is. As you can tell, the music definitely gets under your skin with a combination of high-pitched chiptune sounds and jarring chords. The Lavender Town audio apparently caused nausea, nosebleeds, distress, anger and even suicide when children listen to it for extended periods of time. Hence the name, Lavender Town Syndrome. But where did this myth come from? Well, back in 2010, an anonymous pastebin user uploaded a creepy pasta detailing how this piece of music caused the suicide of over 100 children in Japan upon the game's initial release. The story then became urban legend due to the popularity of the game, and so the story went viral. Because Lavender Town Syndrome was so discussed, it soon became taken as fact, and so a simple horror story became associated with the game due to word of mouth. Over time, various people added additional details to the story to make it even more convincing, and so propagated the rumour that this creepy piece of music did in fact cause mass child suicide. The truth of the matter is that no, this game did not cause children to commit suicide, at least not on the scale documented in the original creepypasta. Look at it this way, do you think that if a game was out there with an audio track that caused kids to kill themselves, it wouldn't have been mass recalled and then banned? That said, this is still one of the more believable video game myths. Lavender Town is a depressing location, especially for a children's game. The audio is out of place and genuinely creepy, not to mention the pitch of the audio certainly is high enough to potentially cause mild harm to players if listened to for extended periods of time. This, coupled with so much talk from the gaming community of Lavender Town Syndrome being a legitimate thing, means that I couldn't fault someone for buying into the hype. However, the truth is, this is simply a clever hoax that gained way too much traction over the years. The worst you'd get from spending too much time in Lavender Town is an earworm. Still, the location and music remains unsettling to this day, and coupled with the Lavender Town Syndrome backstory, it certainly makes for an interesting piece of horror gaming history. And that's the video for today guys, I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, remember to give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this, and I will see you on the next one.